I'm going to talk through uh, three things uh, about the event, and then we're going to hear about some logistics. Uh, so why this thing? Uh, as many of you have picked up, a thing is a parliament or a council or an assembly, and it's an old, it comes from the old, old Norse word. And this was another word for us uh, because we wanted to host IPFS Camp this year right around this timing. Um, but alas, it was not in, a, in the stars. Uh, and so we shifted the event into this thing. Uh, we decided to host it here next to Thingvellir, where the All Thing, one of the oldest parliaments ever, I think the oldest running one, um, is, is going. Uh, and that's why it's called a thing. But why bring everyone together? Um, so many of you know that there, we've been struggling with some implementation bottlenecks in the last few years. Um, uh, the, the most notable, there's a bunch of them, but one notable one was that Go IPFS was being pulled in so many directions by many different people with lots of different expectations. And just look at the, I don't know, pile of open issues and open PRs and so on. And so it's like too much. Um, and it reminded me of uh, times in the past in web architecture and web tech where similar kinds of bottlenecks had formed around things like HTTPD and Apache 2 and so on. Uh, and so we decided to rename the IPFS implementation because its name, it, its, its Go IPFS name made it, made it so canonical and so important and so there can only be one that that needed to go. Uh, so we remained it, renamed it to Kubo. Uh, thank you, everyone who worked on this, because that was, that still is, and will continue to be an ongoing important thing. So thanks for, thanks for that renaming. Uh, but what that means is that now everyone is free uh, to roam around and build whatever implementations you want uh, with, with all of these protocols, uh, and you can make uh, your own version of IPFS. Um, the thing that we have to figure out is what exactly is an IPFS node? and what exactly is the IPFS protocol. Um, I've heard lots of different, different things, kind of the working. I, I used to say, oh, well, IPFS is really just kind of like UnixFS and IPLD and Lip2P in a trench coat. And like, if you have those things, then it's an IPFS node. Um, but then people pointed out, like, well, does it really have to go over Lip2P? What if it doesn't? What if it goes over HTTP? Like, well, I guess that's technically that. But what if it's not UnixFS? What if it's like some other data structures? Well, that's probably, that's probably fine too. So um, I think a lot of the community is landing on if it's got content address data and you can move it around and it can interop and it, it's basically hypermedia or an app or something like that, something like the web. If it's the content address web, that's IPFS. Uh, is that, yeah, cool. So I think, I think that's too fuzzy for the, pro, like the protocol labs person in me. It's like, ugh, that's not a protocol. But, but maybe it is. Uh, and so I think it's up to us, to the, up to this group, to figure out what it will be. Um, but anyway, uh, the next thing that we wanted to do after busting that bottleneck is to have a bunch of innovations discussions. A lot of us have been working on implementations for a long time, have been pushing a bunch of um, different topics and different areas and so on in lots of different venues on GitHub, in papers, in implementations, in conference and whatnot. We had an IPFS implementations workshop relatively recently where we pulled a few, pulled a few um, uh, folks for like what they've been working on and what they think about this, this stuff. Um, and we thought that it would be great to have a much larger version of this, to have a, a much larger sharing of um, knowledge and sharing of innovations around what a good IPFS implementation is for a particular use case and what learnings you have been coming up with. So, uh, of course, there's a bunch of content and so on. Um, there's a lot of different implementations. Here's just a few that are represented here. There's many, mo many more. Um, and what I kind of want is to have a bunch of discussions this week. Uh, by the way, this is, this is talk imagery, and for the first time ever, the stock imagery is actually us. <laughs> like we're actually talking about like gears and Java applets and goals and financial transactions and mail. It's pretty cool. <laughs> um, and we should have a cam 
Cambrian explosion of implementation uh, tools and systems and success. So that's uh, why we're all uh, coming together. Uh, the other thing that um, I think can come out of this is a lot of community growth. So often when we get together and we share knowledge and we talk about things and we record uh, talks, that tends to diffuse a lot of our knowledge and help a lot more people onboard onto uh, these systems and these protocols and so on. Uh, so use the talks during this week as a way not just to inform everybody else here, but to inform the audience of the future. So remember that when there's a recording, usually the vast majority of the audience is not in that room. It's in the future. And so now you can include, of course, discussion um, either after your talk or around it or in the hallway track or in separate sessions um, to spend the time with the people here. Um, but use both. Uh, use both to your success, meaning um, remember that part of the talks and what you're going to record is going to be for many other people who are not here today or this week who will be watching you, um, but also the people here. Um, so to, to, to in both. Uh, and that uh, can yield a lot of protocol growth. Um, not pictured here. Uh, something happened to my image. Um, so that, this is why we're having the thing. So um, it's like a smaller version of IPFS camp. Um, we're still deciding. Uh, and I mean, we are still deciding whether or not we should have IPFS camp still this year, like late this year. Um, we can do that. It, I'll pose the question again to you at the end of the week and see if you want to get together towards the end of the year, and then we can have it. Um, and if not, we can have it in Q1 or Q2 or something like that. Um, IPFS camp will tend to be much larger with a lot more people and a lot more of the community who couldn't make it, make it here. Um, so yeah, again, implementation bottlenecks, let's bust those. Let's have a bunch of innovation discussions. Let's yield an implementation Cambrian explosion and funnel that into community growth and protocol growth. So some goals as we walk across the implementation glaciers. Um, let's focus on advancing IPFS implementations. And it's easy to kind of think you're advancing them, but not really. Um, oftentimes, and I'm like, very prone to this. Uh, we'll talk a lot about possibilities, or and very concretely, and you know, there's some, some plan for the future. Um, but that plan is actually quite far away. It's not actually that useful. It's not that actually that useful to many people. So um, I would encourage you to focus on the near and midterm instead of the long term. Like focus the long term to the extent that you need to figure out the near and midterm, um, and focus on solving the key problems that you've been encountering and have been huge pain points for you for the last year or two. Things like encryption. Things like um, uh, codex, things like uh, the lack of computing in the runtime, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, and I encourage you to explore ideas together. So share your knowledge, uh, get feedback on ideas, discuss possibilities, um, propose things, propose things that are out there. Um, and if you share a lot of what you've been thinking or planning to build, then maybe somebody else will go and build that. Uh, so maybe you don't have to do it all alone. Maybe you don't have to, do, to go through all of the work yourself. Uh, maybe a lot of the other people here can help you uh, in your journey. And orient towards catalyzing action. So um, a lot of ideas and a lot of things can um, be really good and help advance our understanding. But if we don't turn those into plants of some sort, if we don't commit to shipping something at some point in time, if we don't yield some improvement, then it'll sort of like become this amorphous knowledge in our, in our minds or in documents and so on, and it won't actually have impact yet. It's potential impact, potential for the future, uh, but I think all of us in this room want to have impact this year. Uh, and so I urge you to, with a lot of these plans, orient towards catalyzing action. And build relationships. So one of the big reasons to get everyone into the same place physically as opposed to on a Zoom room uh, is to get to know each other, to build relationships, to build um, uh, bridges between teams to make shared plans, to talk about your roadmaps and where you're, where you're headed, to talk about shared problems and tackle those together. Um, there's a lot of people here who we've heard are working on similar things and could totally like tackle that together and divide and conquer those problems. And also have us a goal to learn new things. These, uh, it, it was great to hear in a lot of uh, people's uh, what they want to get out of the thing was learning a bunch of things. And that's great. Um, 
Explore new concepts. Get out of your comfort zone. Go to, go to talks or tracks or sessions that you don't know anything about and learn more. Um, those kinds of, often you will find something pretty interesting and pretty amazing that will perhaps become a big part of what you do in the future. Uh, so um, it tends to be that once you start working on a lot of things and you get sort of like um, saturated in terms of like your time, you stop learning as much or like you stop prioritizing learning. And so I strongly encourage that you always, first of all, always prioritize learning, period, daily. Uh, but separately, just in this event, uh, really prioritize it and make sure that you go to a few, either every day or every, or at least one, one day, go to some sessions that you don't know anything about and you, uh, you want to learn something new. And um, focus on growing community. So when you um, go and present something, try to explain things clearly uh, beyond the people in the room. So the people in the room here have a ton of context and a ton of knowledge. And so they're going to be able to uh, understand a lot of what you're saying. Uh, and you'll be able to kind of give very succinct descriptions. Uh, however, a lot of the people that might be watching you in the future uh, may not. And so if you kind of like expand your, your um, definitions a bit and you expand uh, your thinking and so on, you'll be able to support newcomers a lot better. Um, and it also, there are some newcomers in the room. So as you find them, uh, help them out and help them learn a lot uh, of the stack, help explain things. Um, and so on, uh, pay it forward. Uh, and as you do, also help be bridges and connect people. So if you hear that so-and-so is like interested in X, Y, and Z, and you know that somebody else is interested in those things, make sure they talk to each other. So help match make, because uh, that can often uh, yield really, really good results. So again, um, as some goals, advance happy implementations, explore ideas together, catalyze action, build relationships, learn new things, and grow the community. So now, um, a few thoughts about event format. Um, so the structure of the event is very um, autonomy-oriented and choose-your-own-adventure-oriented. So there's, uh, as probably most of you know now, uh, separate tracks. Each track has, is oriented around a different topic. Um, the tracks follow different formats. Some of them are like more talk-oriented, some are more, much more discussion-oriented. Some are just hack, hacking-oriented. Um, and each track is up to the track lead. So each track lead, each organizer sort of decides like the format of that track. Um, again, choose your own adventure. Attend the things that you want. Uh, so this is the only time when we're all together uh, between now and the closing. Uh, that's it. Although I think uh, th those teal ones that I highlighted, project and community and road mapping next steps, probably really useful for a lot of folks. So that's why I highlighted those. And the event also has a lot of downtime together. So um, lots of dinners together, lots of outings together, and so on. That's so that you can get to know each other, build relationships, learn from each other, discuss, and so on. So there's implicit in all of this a massive hallway track where lots of groups are going to clump up and discuss all kinds of ideas. Uh, all right, I'm going to pause here and hand off to Brennan.